Good morning, everyone. And let us start today as we would start every day at Richard Challenger School by making the sign of the cross together. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I hope you are all well, and I hope you are all keeping safe. And I hope that you can hear me um, on this uh, technology that we're using this morning. It's the first time I've decided to do it this way, so I hope it all works out. This morning, I want to start by telling you a story um, from this book. And if you, I don't know if you can see this book very well, but this is quite a well-thumbed book. And this is a book that was given to me by my old headmistress of my primary school, um, which was Westbury House in New Malden. And this book is called A Year Book of Saints. And uh, I think she had read this a lot before she gave it to me. And, and I've used it a lot over the years for various assemblies. And this morning, I want to tell you the story of a saint called St. Boniface, whose feast day is on June the 5th, so in just a few days' time. St. Boniface was born in the year 680, and he was an English priest. And St. Boniface went to Germany to convert uh, people from pagan religions, from non-Christian faiths, uh, to Christianity. St. Boniface was... Um, renowned for his eloquence, his ability to speak beautifully, but also for his kindness. But St. Boniface was also incredibly courageous. He was a very brave man. And the people that he went to convert in the particular area that he, he was in Germany, they worshipped um, Thor, the Scandinavian god of thunder. And for those of you who have seen the Marvel movies recently, um, not that particular Thor, I imagine, but some, something to do with that legend. And where they used to worship uh, Thor, the god of thunder, was around an oak tree. And St. Boniface wanted to show the pagans, the, the non-Christians, that the Christian god was more powerful than their um, god of thunder. And so what he decided to do was to take an axe to the oak tree and chop it down. And so he went to the tree and all the uh, pagans gathered around and they watched on in horror as he took an axe to the tree, thinking that at any moment the god of thunder would intervene and, and stop what was going on. And he took blow after blow after blow after blow, and eventually the tree fell down and they closed their eyes and held their heads. And when they opened their eyes and they looked up, they saw the tree fallen and splintered and St. Boniface standing there with the sun shining down on him. And at that moment, they realized that the god of Christianity was perhaps superior to the God of thunder. And in that spot where that tree stood, he built a very humble chapel. And from there, he started to spread the Christian faith in Germany. Also, the story says. At the age of 75, yes, 75, he decided that he had to continue his missionary journey. So he moved to another part of Germany to, and, uh, to try to convert the Frisians. And he was having great success with his group of brothers and priests that he took with him to convert these people. But a group of heathens, unbelievers, decided that they were had enough of or were frustrated by um, this success. And they decided that they were going to rebel, they were going to attack, and they were going to stop this Christian mission. So I just want to read you this very small section from this book that my old headmistress gave me to end this story. Some members of the missionary party began to arm themselves, but Boniface gave orders that no weapon should be raised against the attackers. We will not return evil with evil, he said. The time of our departure is at hand. Let us not fear those who may destroy our bodies, but put our trust in God, who will redeem our souls. Then putting a copy of the gospel under his head, the saint lay down in calm to receive the death blow. His companions followed his example, 
and a few minutes, the souls of the martyrs were on their way to God. How different is Boniface's example to the example that we saw from the leader of America yesterday? He put a gospel under his head and he said, we will not confront evil with evil. Instead, he, sacri instead, he sacrificed himself for the benefit of others. Boniface, in my view, showed extraordinary bravery. But he also demonstrated extraordinary faith. I think it's almost unbelievable if I was called upon to so, show such dedication and moral direction, I'm not sure that I would be able to stand up to the test, to allow myself to be sacrificed, because I thought that the right thing to do was not to confront evil with evil. Perhaps in my heart, I know that I would fail in that situation. And this makes me rather sad. But I'm also aware of my humanity and my frailty. But, and it is a massive but, I know that if I truly, truly try to do my best, if I try to put the common good front and centre, then, then I really think any shortcomings that I may have, and there are many, will be overlooked and ultimately on that day of judgment be forgiven. Today is the first day that I've worn a shirt and tie since we stopped school and went into lockdown. Shirts and ties, uniforms, they all have their place in helping us to determine a certain sense of commonality, uh, community, and perhaps business and standards. They set a very easy bar for us all to stay on. However, as St Boniface helps us to see, it is our actions and our moral direction that we will ultimately be judged upon. Appearances and fancy words can be deceptive. Judge people on their actions. Look beyond the easy and the obvious. Challenge them and challenge yourselves. Do not accept what you simply see at first hand. Be brave, keep faith, and do ordinary things extraordinarily well. Now, let us return to our prayers. And I would like to pray this morning for the people in America who are not only facing this pandemic, but are also facing a huge civil uprising. I'd like to pray for anyone who's been touched by bereavement in this coronavirus. And I would like to pray for everyone in our school community as we manage this situation. And perhaps you will join me in prayer as we ask Our Lady to intercede on our behalf as we say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Bishop Chaloner, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just a couple of very short notices uh, for you. I hope you are managing well with your home learning. If you are struggling at all, please do contact your teachers. Please do contact your form tutor or your year leader, and they will work out ways to support you and help you. We are now actively looking at how we can do more live learning, <clears throat> but we want to get it right. We don't want to rush at it, um, but that certainly will be coming on stream more, particularly for year 10 initially um, as, of, as of next week. Um, for those of you in year nine, I know Mr. O'Brien is going through the options process at the moment, and you're going to receive more information about that this week. So please look out for that. Watch the videos, have discussions with your parents, and 
If you have any questions, of course, do ask um, your subject teachers or, or your year leaders, and, and they will help, and your year leader, and, they, and he will help you with those questions. Um, for the rest of you, or certainly, sorry, for the students in year 10 and year 12, we're, we are working really hard at the moment to try and work out how we can have you back into school on the 15th of June. Um, I, I am confident that we will have year 10 and year 12 back in to school on the week of the 15th of June to some degree, not like school would normally be, but to some degree. We've done the risk assessment and we're still working out the further plans of how it might work. Um, and what I plan to do is by no later than the 10th of June, I will communicate to your parents uh, and to, to you as students how this will work. And one of the things I, I will do at that time is I will do a, um, a Google Meet, a bit like this, where I will talk to you about what our plans are so that we, and then you can have an opportunity to drop any questions into the chat box and I can answer those questions uh, if you have them. Thank you for those of you who were able to join me at nine o'clock this morning. Um, I'm going to go off and do some reading of Stone Cold for, uh, for at 9.30 for those of you who are following along with that. Please look after yourselves. Please stay safe. Please follow the sensible advice on social distancing. And I look forward to seeing all of you at some point, hopefully in the not too distant future. Thank you very much.